Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, folks, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you can reach Tim. Here's a great newsletter every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, I sent you some charts over. Uh, yeah, you did. Are you, are you, are you ready? I'm ready. I've, I've been ready since last week when... You nailed this thing again, Tim, and, you know, you're looking at that S&P, and it was halfway above the top Bollinger Band, and here we are on the 4th of uh, March, and uh, 5th of March, and uh, this thing's starting. So let's do it, man. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at, actually, chart one is what we talked about last week. Okay. And, and that's that monthly chart, you know, the yep. 50 percent above the upper Bollinger Band. And uh, if you go to the second window up from the bottom, there's a slight. Uh, actually, that chart is the SPX VIX ratio with the Bollinger Band on it. Okay. And, and uh, if you look at to the the right side, the current time frame. Yes. You made a uh, the the. Uh, SPX VIX ratio made a lower high, while the S&P's made a higher high. It just that's that blue arrow. Yes. Not a lot, not a huge divergence, but still a divergence. So you had actually two divergences. You had one on the SPX VIX ratio. Okay. And also uh, you're above the 50 percent above the mid Bollinger Band or and the upper we, Bollinger Band. And folks, so, when we're talking about 50 percent above the Bollinger Band, uh, as you put it on your charts, put it on the monthly. Which is even more intense. This is on the monthly that Tim's talking about. So pretty cool. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. This whole thing's on a monthly chart. Right. So they kind of tell different stories on different time frames. Sure. So actually, let's, let's go look at the uh, uh, next chart, okay. which is the weekly time frame. So you started off the monthly. Now we're going to look at the weekly. Yep. And it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, okay. Uh, if you look to the, you know, where we are right now, uh, this last rally up, you know, the uh, BIX, even though it's going sideways, it still made a higher high uh, on the SPX VIX ratio on the time frame there. So it's not like a, a monthly chart, you know, uh, rules a weekly chart. The weekly chart rules a daily chart. Yes. So, so my interpretation of this is, you know, this is not a, a major decline, nothing like we had back in, if you look back in November of 2021, that was a major divergence. You had um, the SPX VIX ratio, which is second window up from the bottom, making lower highs. Uh, we don't have that here. So you still have a pullback, but there's not a big divergence. So I don't think it's any big decline starting here. And so let's flip to chart three real quick. Okay. Um, we talked about this last Thursday. Yes. This is updated to uh, today. And the third window up from the bottom is the um, six three day average of the um, um, six three day average of the arms index. So it's like three months of arms index. Yes. And usually, if you're, if you're above one point one, you got enough panic in the market. Uh, you can have some pullbacks, but nothing real significant. Okay. You know, big big declines can occur when you get down around point one and lower. We're up to one point one two which is you can have a minor pullback here, but it's not set up for a major pullback. So in the term, you know, the weekly uh, uh, SPX VIX ratio and the 63-day uh, average of the arms actually look decent. So Nice. So let's look at, now let's look at the short term. And, folks, so, just so you understand, if you're driving in your car right now, remember the program's archived so you can go over this when you get home because these – Different tools that Tim's used are just awesome, man. Okay, so I'm ready, Tim. That's the next chart, right? Yeah, yep. the chart, chart number four. I have it's it. It's just yep. a daily, yeah, daily chart of the uh, SPY, and that blue area. Uh, I just want to point out that's where the gap is. Yes. And uh, I thought, you know, the first time we pulled it up, we go down and touch it, and we didn't. We didn't even, you know, come close to it. Market rallied anyhow. And now uh, we're awful close, but we're still not touching it. I made this chart earlier in the day, but we did get a clue yesterday. Uh, if you, the bottom window is just the VIX, and the S and P's inner day was higher than the Friday. Yesterday was Monday, and inner day was higher than Friday. And while all that was going on, the VIX is also making a higher uh, low. 
as the S and P's was making a higher high. And that's usually a bearish divergence on a short term basis. Okay. And also, the volume yesterday was anemic. You yes. Know, it tried to rally above Friday's high. Yeah. And volume came in about 30% eyeballing it here, about 30% lighter. So it really didn't have energy to really push higher. Plus, you had that VIX um, divergence. So I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's not going to go. So now, if we can't take out the previous high with volume, it's going to try to take out the previous swing low. Yes. So the previous swing low is the low we had last week, and that looks like about 504 approximately, you know, and the, and the, and the uh, gap and the comes in, you know, probably about 503. And the spot, yeah. It. And we've hit, you know, it's wild, Tim. We've hit 504.910 today. So. Yeah. Well, well, how you test that gap is also going to be important. Yes. So if, if you test, you know, the gap formed on, uh, I should have wrote that date down, but. I, I have uh, it. You know, it's like two weeks ago. The, that, first, that, the last that, one's like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah about two weeks ago. Yeah, it's exactly so, you know, two weeks ago. Whatever volume of that day is, if you test that gap on the, on the day that bo the gap was created, the volume of that day, if you test it on equal or greater volume, that won't be the final time you test that gap. You'll test it again. If you test it on lighter volume, ten percent, you know. So say that day of two weeks ago was hundred million shares, and today you test it on ninety million shares. That gap's going to be support. But if you test it on hundred million shares or even more, you may, you may bounce, but you're going to come back in and test that gap again. All right. So I don't know how that gap's going to be tested. I don't know if we test it. Uh, today, you know, I, I don't know if we got, uh, let's see, update my chart here. Uh, yeah, we may, I don't know. We'll probably test it this week. I don't know if we'll do it today or not. But, uh, how you test that gap is going to be important. And also, and you know, you know, it's interesting, Tim, is that, um, uh, if we just, I don't mean to interrupt, but if we go to the, cool. if we go, go to the NDX 100, right? The Qs. So the spot, the SPY, the volume is not that big today, but the Qs are coming into that gap right now, and it's going to have more volume because we've already done 45 million. I'm showing 52 when it gapped up, but this is still early, man. You know, we're talking, yeah, yeah. we're talking 20 minutes. They'll throw 20 million shares into the Qs. Anyway, yeah. stay right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. Tim will go through these charts for us. We have the Dow Industrials down 492, NASDAQ off uh, 321, S&P's off 68. We're coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tom O'Brien, Tim Wood. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow off 515, NASDAQ's off 325, S&P's are off 71. Tim's bringing us through these charts, baby. Okay, so I have the VIX, uh, the SPY and the VIX up right now, Tim. SPY, is that chart number four? Yes. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, there's a couple things was, was going to go on. You know, you, you were talking about the QQQ. Yes. You know, on, on this chart, this is the SPY chart. I circled on the volume charts two days there. Yes. If you notice those two days I circled. But the point, QQQ works similar. It's, it's, it's not exactly the rules of the S&Ps, but they do work similar. So if you got a bunch of volume coming in on the QQQ today and volume is 50% higher than the previous days before it, it's going to stop that decline. Okay. So Because it's going to be a selling climax. And it, so if it's abrupt change, either up or down in volume, it stops it. But if it's a gradu gradual change, either up or down, it's going to keep going. You know, it's so, wild now. <laughs> hey, folks, when you do this number, man, this is so cool. It's unbelievable. So check it out, Tim. Yesterday, you know, as we both know, and you, you just informed the whole audience, we had light volume. So it's 34 million. And the Qs could do 60 million today. <laughs> That's crazy. Ian, you have wow. Powell, we have Powell talking tomorrow and the next day, you know, in the Senate and the House. So we get some volatility yeah. coming at us, which is pretty cool. Yeah, well, this is the week before option expiration week, too, and this is where you get all the, yeah. the weird stuff. Yeah, I, I, you know, I call it, well, actually, Weird Wally Wednesday. Weird Wally yeah. Wednesday. Kind of named, yeah, Weird Wally Wednesday. Which is Wallen, uh, uh, Wallenchuck. Wallenchuck. Yeah, yeah Wallenchuck, I figure that. He's, he's still in the business, too. So I love it. Um, I haven't interviewed him forever, man. I mean, 
You know, folks said when, when in the nineties that I had, I didn't have him on that many times. I had him on a few times because he's a wise guy too, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. he's a lot of fun to talk to. Yeah. So, all right, but anyhow, I'm thinking. My opinion right now is that we're probably going to touch the gap. Okay. And how we touch that gap is going to be important. And if you notice, you know, the market's down a bunch. You know, 1.3 as we're putting it, as we're talking right now. And you got a trend right now one at 0.8. I know. I'm not showing any, and I panic yet. But Did I lose you? Everybody. Oh, go ahead. No, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I have you. I have you, yes. Uh, right. Well, I'm saying when, when the trend, you need, you need at least a 1.2 to really get panic in the market, and only panic only forms at bottoms. And a lot of times that panic just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. You know. So, but today we're not getting it. They're not uh, panicking not today. Yet. They're buying today so, at a 0.86, right? <laughs> Which yeah. is pretty wild, man. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it may show. You know, it'll probably show up sometime this week, but yeah, it doesn't appear it's going to be today or anything. So I don't think today is the day of the bottom. At right. This point. Right. So actually, let's go to chart five. Okay. Um, this is the trend here. Uh, the bottom window is a ten-day trend. The next window up is a five-day trend. The next window up is a two-day trend. Um, you at least need the two-day trend to get up around one point two. And um, so I'm thinking, you know, to really get a buy signal going for next week, because I think expiration week, which is next week, is going to be an up week. I would think you at least get a two-day trend up 1.5. We think that could happen this week. So we'll see if that develops or not. Did but you say right a two-day trend at 1.2 or 1.5? Uh, say that again? On the two-day trend, you like to see it at 1.2 or 1.5? Actually, 1.5 is ideal, but I've seen 1.2 work. I see. So, okay, cool. I got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of that's kind of a moving target on that two day trend. Yes. The ten day trend stays real consistent at 1.2, but the, the two day trend, if really bullish market gets down 1.2, and bearish market sometimes you need 1. 1. 1.75. Okay. So you kind of watch what's happening over the last six months. That's the reason why I got that one point. Looks like about 1.3 going across that two day trend. I see. I got and it. Yep. It, yeah, see, it works pretty good at uh, 1.3 right now. If you look at all the, those are all where the bottom. That's what are. I'm looking at. I know. That's so, pretty cool, man. Wow. Yep. Yeah. So, but, but anyhow, that's uh, the trend's not, or the downtrend on the SPX is probably coming close to a low, but it's not a low today. Um, and it may not be tomorrow, but sometime this week, I think you're going to find a low. Yep. So, but not today. Um, and you know, as Tim said, bit, you know, please. you know, we we got option expiration next week. So, our man Dave White, he used to love this, folks, setting up. You know, if you can get a nice low in and get the panic this week, you can get some nice uh, calls at cheap money, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of for that thing too. Is when everybody's really blowing out the. The trends and stuff is, it's you know the the higher the panic I guess yeah the, the better it is because it's almost actually putting fuel gasoline on a fire yes so when it really blows out because when that thing reverses they don't let you in right uh, right so, as I mean it's it's, a, it's like a rocket ship out of these holes yeah but if it goes into kind of a minor panic blow it comes out uh, a decent rally but not you know not like explosive but if it goes into the hole of extreme panic it blasts out of that market oh, with yeah. extreme volatility to the upside so i don't know which one we'll get, we'll get this week but we will i guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see so we can move on if you want i'm ready i just hit All the right, next chart, one yep chart six we're gonna go real quick here uh, what i want to show is you know i guess sir uh, this is the uh which uh, chart six is Okay, the inflation deflation ratio on the weekly time frame. So this is kind of an intermittent term type signals, and the, the the dark red circles are times when another indicator uh, gave a buy signal, which is on page seven. Okay. So all those dark circles in there are the exact times both those uh, signals were created uh, for for both. Of so while I'm training, these, these are. Bicycles of different methods coming in at the same time. Yes. And if you, if you look in chart number eight, 
Okay. You can see the red star, which is the bottom window. I see it. On the XAU, which is the weekly XAU gold ratio. We had an RSI hit below 30 last week. And those circles on the XAU bottom window there are the same signals generated on those two previous indicators. Wow. And so we got some good juice on gold this last three increases days, man. As yep. more signals come in on the same time. Yes. So, you know, we've been kind of been, or I've been kind of bullish here over the last several months. If you notice, those previous buy signals really didn't fail. They just kind of went up and come back down, you know, because really the market hasn't done a squat since June of last year. Right. I mean, it just moves, it moves sideways. Besides and, driving the gold bulls, including me, crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just a sideways market. You right. go up, come right back down, go back up. All right. But now you got three different signals of, of three different types of indicators coming in, and all of them, you know, something, we still may move sideways here a little bit, but we're probably at at least an intermediate term low at a minimum. Yes. So we'll, we'll see how that all works out. But. Now, now, stay stay right there, Tim. We're going to be coming back, folks. we got two more charts to go with Tim. Uh, those, those are also going to be gold charts. we got the Dow right now off 444, and NASDAQ off 297, S&P is off 61. When I look at, you know, my uh, screen here, it's, <laughs> these golds are still uh, in pretty good shape. Tim and I are going to come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and right now we are talking uh, gold. So I got the chart up, for you, Tim. All right, uh, chart six. Uh, I kind of went over brief briefly, but this chart gets a signal probably uh, once a year, and what it is is inflation deflation ratio RSI. Um, but anyhow, the, the point I was trying to make the 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 circled bold circled areas yes are times uh which is you know we got one here you know last week or two uh bold circles and we the last one we had was 2020 you know 2022 and before that was 2000 uh, looks like about 19 and so anyhow these signals are pretty rare yes to get the rsi on a weekly time frame below that but when you do get it they're pretty reliable. Nice. So anyhow, th that chart uh, it gave a buy signal, and this next one, chart number seven, yeah, is in play. Uh, it's the uh, uh, yeah the fifty day average, which is the bottom window, seems to work best. Okay. When the fifty day average of the up down volume gets below twenty, and turns up, that did it back in actually uh, late February, <coughs> and it was bold. Uh, bold circles on the bottom mirror the ones of, of uh, chart number six. Right. So, so you're getting a double buy signal on this method. So it's something totally different than what the first method was. Yes. And you flip to you flip to chart number eight. Yeah. Which is the weekly XAU gold ratio. Right. So whenever when everything just goes in a dumpster, this this is a chart that you know pretty much shines Look at that. and the bottom window uh, is that uh, i circled those times yes and then those mirror the previous signal so you got three s signals uh all developed at the same time right in this vicinity so we at least at, at least at a minimum looking at an imminent term low here we are rocking we are rocking until thursday with our man mr tim Ord. remember you can get hold of him at ord ord hyphen oracle.com tim have a great one have a safe one all right, we'll see you Thursday. Thursday. Have a great one, folks. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock.